Welcome to Electron Online, and now to something new. Here we're trying to find what we call the nth partial sum of an arithmetic series. That means a series where the difference between the numbers that are being added is always common, it's the same. So here we can see an example, we have 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10, so you can see that the difference between any two consecutive numbers is always equal to 2. And if we want to find the partial sum, because if this is an infinite series, of course, we'd have to add an infinite number of numbers. But if we have a partial sum, as we call it, the nth partial sum, we add up the first n number of terms. So in this case, s sub 5 means the fifth partial sum, or the sum of the first five terms. So in this case, it would be 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10, and you clearly see that's equal to 30. But how do we come up with a general equation for the end, for the sum of the first n terms? Well, that's what we're going to try to figure out. So here we have the general equation, s sub n, that means the sum of the first n terms is a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 all the way up to a sub n. And now we want to come up with a general equation for that. So this is how we're going to do it. First of all, s sub 1, that is simply equal to a sub 1. So if n equals 1, so we can write here, if n equals 1, then s sub 1 equals a sub 1. But if n is equal to 2, then s sub 2 is equal to a sub 1 plus the common difference. It'll be the next term, so it would be a sub 1 plus the common difference. This is equal to a sub 2, and this is a sub 1. So a sub 2 is a sub 1 plus the common difference. So in other words, this is equal to 2 a sub 1 plus one time the common difference. How about if n is equal to 3? Then s sub 3 is equal to, well, what we had before, 2a sub 1 plus d plus, well, now we're going to have a sub 1 plus 2d, because of that, the third term. The third term is going to be a sub 1 plus twice the common difference, so that's going to be plus 2d. If we add that to what we already have, that will be equal to 3a sub 1 plus 3d. So let me get out of your way so you can see it. So 2a1 plus a1 is 3a1 plus d, and 2d gives me 3d. So here, s sub 1 is a sub 1. s sub 2 is 2a sub 1 plus d. s sub 3 is 3a1 plus 3d. And let's do a few more terms and see what we get. So when n is equal to 4, s sub 4 is equal to what we started with, s sub 3, which is 3a1 plus 3d, plus a sub 1. Now here we add a 2d, so we add 3d. So we have 3a sub 1 plus a sub 1, that's equal to 4a sub 1, and 3d plus 3d is now equal to plus 6d. All right, let's keep it going a little bit more. When n is equal to 5, s sub 5 is equal to... That would be 4a sub 1 plus 6d plus, well, here we need another a sub 1. Here we add a 3d, so that would be plus 4d. So that would be 5a sub 1 plus 6 plus 4, which is plus 10d. So are we seeing a pattern? The answer is yes. S1 we have a1, S2 we have 2a1, S3 we have 3a1. So for for every s, for every additional term, we add one more a1. So for n equals 5, s of 5, we have 5a1. And then we add to that plus, so in this case, that would be plus 0d. Here we add plus 1d. Here we add 3d's, 6d's, 10d's. Let's do one more term to see where this goes. So when n is equal to 6, s sub, s sub 6 is equal to 5a1 plus 10d, that's what we had for s sub 5. Now we add one more a1 plus, instead of 4d, we add 5 more d. So that means we're going to get 6a1, 6a1 plus 5 and 10, that would be 15d. And one more, when n equals 7, we get s sub 7 equals, uh, that would be 6a1 plus 15d. That's what we got for 6, s6 plus another a1 plus here we add a 5d so plus 6d which is going to be equal to 7a1 
plus 21d. Okay, now we should be able to come up with a general equation that gives us those results. So, we can see that s sub n is equal to n times a1. That's the easy part, right? And n equals 1, we have 1a1. When n equals 2, we have 2a1. When n equals 3, we have 3a1. So it's clear that we're going to have n times a1 plus. Now we need to come up with an expression that will give us the correct number d's for each case when n is 1, when n is 2, when n is 3. Well, first of all, when n is 1, I get 0 d's. All right, so maybe we need an n minus 1 times d. So that would work for the first one. How about the second one? Well, we have 2 minus 1 is 1d. How about the third one? 3 minus 1 would be 2d, but now we get 3d. So I need to multiply by something else. K. K. Let's see here. How about... So notice I have, let's see what I get. I get 0, I get 1, I get 3, I get 6, I get 10, 15, and 21 Ds. When n is 1, I get 0. When n equals 2, I get 1. When n equals 3, I should get 2, but I get 3. So, 3 is 1 and a half times 2. I can see that 3 is equal to 1.5 times 2. So, if I end up with n minus 1 times d for the second one, when we have n equals 2, then n equals 3, I need to multiply it like maybe n over 2. Let's try that. n over 2 times n minus 1 times d for the third one. Let's see if that works. Because n over 2, when n is 3, 3 divided by 2 is 1 and a half, and 1 half times 2 gives me 3. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Now, does that work for the others? Well, we'll check that in just a moment. So let's try and see if that works for all the others. Okay, so I need to move this out a little bit because I want to come up with a general equation. So I want s sub n is equal to n times a1 plus. So I'm looking for that plus part. If I write n over 2, and n over 2, I guess I'm running out of room here, but let me do it like this. All right. So if n is equal to 1, 1 divided by 2 is a half, but a half times 0 is still 0. That gives me the right result there. When n is equal to 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 1 times 2 minus 1 gives me 1. So that works. If n is equal to 3, 3 divided by 2 is 1 and a half. 1 and a half times 3 minus 1 is 2. So 1 and a half times 2 gives me 3. So this here would be 1.5 times 2 is equal to 3, which is what I get over there. So if n is equal to 3, 3 divided by 2 is 1 and a half. And 3 minus 1 is 2. When I multiply, I get 3, which is the number I get. So, so far, so good. Maybe this is holding. Let's try for the next one. When n is equal to 4, I get 4 divided by 2 times 4 minus 1. This is 2 times 3, which gives me 6. So it gives me the next one. All right, I think I'm on track here. How about when n is equal to 5? 5 divided by 2 times 5 minus 1. That's 2 and a half times 4, which gives me 10. That gives me the next one. How about n equals 6? That gives me 6 divided by 2 times 6 minus 1. That's 3 times 5, which is 15. And when n is equal to 7, that gives me 7 divided by 2 times 7 minus 1. That's 6 times 3 and a half, which is 21. And so it looks like I found the right combination. So my general equation now becomes S sub n is equal to n times a sub 1 plus n divided by 2 multiplied times n minus 1 times d. And that is the general equation to find the nth 
partial sum of any arithmetic series again the arithmetic series is where the difference between the numbers is common you get a common difference between the numbers and this is how you get any term in the equation or any term in the series all right now let's try it for s5 so s5 is equal to 5 times a1 and a1 in our case is equal to 2 plus 5 divided by 2 times 5 minus 1 and the common difference is 2 so this is equal to 10 plus this is 4 times 2 is 8 divided by 2 is 4 times 5 is 20 and so that's equal to 30 and sure enough we already knew that the fifth partial sum of that particular series was equal to 30 where they, oh that's right so that's the number over here and you can see that using the general equation the general formula we got the same result and this is how we find the partial sum the end partial sum of any portion of the series when it's an arithmetic series and that is how it's done little guesswork little trial and error <laughs> and that is typically how it's done Let's see here. The coefficient of the two previous ones. Two plus one is three. Four plus six is ten. Six plus fifteen is twenty-one. Yep. Yep, that's another way of looking at it. I don't know if you'll find it. It would be difficult to translate that into an equation, but yeah, the, so you can see interesting patterns, and so there, there may be other ways of getting the same result by, again, looking for interesting patterns. But that's how it was done. And so this is how we came up with that equation. Once you have the equation, now you can figure it out for any number of terms for any arithmetic series.